Now ash is a, a good tree to make a spindle out of, but another little trick that Ranger Joe taught me is to look at the roots. And uh, typically ash itself would be too hard to uh, use as a, uh, as a material for a hearth. It's, it's good for a spindle. Uh, but the roots are typically much softer. This is a much better uh, situation for a uh, fallen over ash tree. In this case, it's taken its, its root clump with it. And I'm going to make my way into that uh, root clump to see what we can take so a So we're at. taking a look, uh, a little bit closer look at this root clump. And this could potentially be a nice gold mine. So we've got this uh, larger root that is sticking up here and I think that has a lot of potential and then there's some smaller pieces like these ones uh, here that I think uh, may potentially work as well so I'm going to check out the uh, relative hardness uh, of a couple of them and see if we get something so this is the piece that I ended up selecting um, so uh, you can you can see where I cut it with my uh, Swiss Army and I saw off of the stump. Uh, again, this is a piece of ash, but it's the root of the ash. And you can see some of the little uh, mycorrhiza coming off and the little smaller roots coming off of it in certain spots. And uh, this piece, nice and dry. Um, it does pass the thumbnail test, so I can, I can score it with my thumbnail. This is a little bit uh, thin. Uh, but I can still use this with a, a smaller spindle and I can use this as a hearth. So I'm going to uh, save a little, little bit of this. And uh, I did look into some of these other pieces and they seem to have the right kind of hardness but they're still a little bit wet. And that, that sort of intimate contact with the, uh, with the earth, they're still drawing a little bit of moisture. But these pieces that are sticking right out they seem dry. Well, as usual, as soon as you go through the trouble of harvesting a piece of wood, you come across another stump with even better wood. <laughs> and this looks pretty darn nice. Uh, so this has a lot of potential here. And uh, so uh, this is a little bit more dry. So these sections are a little bit softer. Um, a little bit wet on the outer, but I suspect if I crack into that with my saw, then I'd have something pretty decent. And again, some larger roots that are sticking out that are nice and dry. Uh, some of these are kind of rotted, but, and I was able to snap this with my finger, but that possesses good softness and, uh, and, and is also quite dry. Oh, so. we got another uh, basswood. Uh, growing up right uh, alongside of this larger oak behind it. Uh, but uh, here I've got some confirmation of, of those leaves, which are likely, uh, likely the basswood leaves. And uh, again, we have this sort of clumped characteristic of, uh, of the growth form that's fairly common with basswood. And it does like to do that. It likes to grow up grow out in a clump abutted against another tree I'm not quite sure why that is but that's what it is and uh, lo and behold we have a, a nice piece of dead uh, wood right here that I'm shaking with my hand and uh, this is some pretty good stuff so I'm gonna uh, I'm in a more remote area this time so I'm gonna harvest a little piece of this and see what it's fairly wide spread around here is some uh, shag bark hickory and there's a park right around Rick Martians. He's got a lot of shag bark hickory in his forest, but uh, we don't have a lot. And uh, shag bark hickory is kind of neat. Uh, you see the peeling off bark. And if you grab about uh, a half a cigarette package size piece of bark and uh, just throw that into your barbecue, it'll smoke like crazy and give you a really great uh, uh, hickory flavor to your meat. At least that's a trick that was taught to me by George Hedgepeth on uh, one of his courses. And uh, so I'm going to harvest a little bit, not too much. And I'm just going to take the stuff that is, you know, sort of off the tree here. I'm not going to peel off any bark 
uh, that is protecting the tree itself. I'm just going to remove the stuff that's already off. So I'm not exposing the tree anymore to the elements than it already decided to expose itself to. And this is gonna make some good uh, barbecue stuff. Last tree to talk about are sumacs. And sumacs aren't a preferred wood to me, but uh, I've had luck a number of times uh, getting coals from sumacs. But it really is all about uh, selecting the right piece and making sure it's been dead and well cured and dried. Uh, but one nice feature about sumac is like the sassafras and the aspen, it tends to grow in quite dense stands. Uh, so, you know, apart from the fact that you can use the berries to make a uh, sumac uh, lemonade, uh, you know, often because these trees are, are in stands, those those berries at the top are, are a very distinctive diagnostic feature. So uh, you could recognize it from a distance, walk in towards the stand and look for a, a piece of suitably dead uh, wood. And because it, you know, usually in a, in a sumac stand, they're pretty much all sumac trees, you find a nice dead piece of wood and, and you're likely gonna be lucky. Uh, it isn't very pleasant walking through these stands though because they tend to be quite dense. Uh, with the shrubs and underbrush, but I'm gonna shut off the camera walk through it See if I could find something suitable for using with the bow drill actually Sometimes fate comes up and You really find a nice piece. So I've got a an old sumac here that uh, Has uh, gone down so Maybe I'm gonna harvest a little piece of this. It's it's just perfectly weathered. Okay, we can see this piece that I harvest really bright yellow interior. Um, sumac also has a pith in the center, so it does help to get a little bit larger piece. This is the piece that I cut out. Um, we're looking at about 12 inches or so in size. So just a little quick recap here, because I've, I've come home, I'm on my deck, and uh, we've harvested a uh, few pieces of, uh, of wood here. So at the far end, I have a little bit of basswood. I'm, I'm still not 100% sure of that one. I'm going to crack it open, baton it open in a minute. Uh, we've got the two pieces of willow uh, that are side by side there. Um, that one, 100% identity. I'm pretty sure that's going to work out pretty well. Uh, willow is one of my go-to woods. Um, we have the uh, ash root and I harvested a few pieces today. And then that last piece here, you can see the bright yellow of it on the inside is uh, the piece of uh, staghorn sumac. So uh, I'm gonna recharge my battery and try each of these out uh, on bow drills, see how they work.